Hey folks, it's E-Chip out at location two. And uh, this is our last day assessing this backhoe to see if we're gonna be able to keep it, fix it up, use it, whatever. I have two things to do today. One is I'm gonna pull that transmission off uh, that you saw was rusted out um, on the last video. I'm gonna pull it off and then I'm gonna run the engine uh, to see if there's a, a problem with the uh, power drive train uh, in front of that. In other words, I want to make sure that the torque converter and reverser system and all that uh, kind of stuff is working properly. And then the next thing to do would be pull the head uh, off of the engine, the cylinder head, and inspect the uh, top of the block. We call that the deck uh, for any cracks. Check out the condition of the cylinders and just generally get an idea for the condition of the engine. It's not running very well and I know that it seems pretty clear I have a blown head gasket between cylinders one and two and also low compression and I think cylinder four uh, so or four or five something like that so uh, I particularly want to look at those cylinders and see what it's like and then we'll be able to make a, a decision a final decision on whether or not this thing is going to the scrap heap or uh, whether it's a worthwhile project so Come along. Thanks. Well, before I pull this uh, gearbox off, I thought I'd show you what it looks like again. Uh, last time, in the last video, you saw that, uh, you know, it was pretty, it had a lot of rust on top. And I think a lot of that was just caused uh, from water, moisture over the years, dripping down through the gear shift lever. Uh, because there was no weather boot on it and uh, so uh, but it was a lot more rusty looking than this uh, several days ago the day that I that pulled the gear shift top off um, after the video I squirted a whole bunch of my special mixture of uh, Marvel mystery oil and acetone into this uh, hoping to clean it up a little bit and it does appear to have cleaned it up quite a bit it's not nearly as bad as it was um, that doesn't mean it's a good transmission. We still need to pull it and check it out, but I'm more interested in what's going on back here. Uh, this, uh, point to it, this section right here of the drivetrain is the, uh, what we call the, um, the reverser. And, uh, it's a, it's a shuttle. Um, what it does is allows you to remain in gear and just shift back and forth between forward and reverse. That's helpful when you're doing a lot of earth moving equipment, moving back and forth, you're not always shifting stuff. You just have a little gear shift near the uh, column up here, uh, steering column, where you would shift it back and forth, and that just makes the job easier. But uh, I'm, uh, and then, of course, forward of that, in that sort of, I don't know if you can see it, that sort of rounded uh, bell-shaped housing back, that's called a bell housing, in fact. That area there is the torque converter. That's like an oil-operated clutch, and that that's what gives you your automatic and automatic transmission. But I want to, uh, I want to pull this gearbox off uh, because we're unable to move it now with the rust. I want to start the engine and see if I can get uh, the uh, drivetrain to turn at all uh, while the engine's running. That'll tell me, uh, that would suggest whether I have any problems up here uh, in this forward part or whether it would be oh, probably okay to proceed. Uh, with repairs on the gearbox. Today is Thanksgiving and Robert and the crew are inside working on dinner and enjoying each other and stuff like that. And I'm out here doing what I love. I'm thankful for my kids. I am Robber and our amazing relationship. She is an incredible woman who uh, has a wonderful heart, a dynamite work ethic, and uh, who is just a top notch partner to have uh, in life and you know, especially on projects like this. And there are some women who uh, enjoy, you know, this kind of stuff, getting your hands dirty and coming out here and do this kind of thing. 
um, being involved in building things like a solar generator and stuff like that. And uh, God bless them and more power to them. Robber is one of those people, she is just, everything is an incredible experience to her. But she just has that wonderful um, attitude of discovery and excitement and adventure. No matter what it is, it could be some of the most ordinary things that you think you and I, you know, may not, may think are so ordinary, but she finds such pleasure in many ordinary things. That's one of the things I love so much about her. I need a wrench. Anyway, I am, um, I just want everybody to know how blessed and thankful I am for uh, Robert. Really thankful to God for this wonderful gift of salvation. He's so good to us. Is he not? Those of you who are Christians can agree, I'm sure. I hope. And I'm not sure I really understood or appreciated the love of God and what it means and how patient it is and forbearing and long-suffering how filled with grace he is I never really understood that concept I thought I did but I never really understood it until I became a father because you know you see the the challenges that your kids face you you observe their shortcomings you know you observe their idiosyncrasies and you're reminded of yourself so many times by your kids and uh, and yet you still love your kids and can't imagine life without them and wouldn't want them wouldn't wouldn't not want them in your in your life and you know to think that God feels that way about us how he sees us the way we are with all of our messes and stuff that we create and how he still loves us oh my gosh so anyway if anybody had a right to be angry at us it's God and he loves us so much that he will always take us in when we screw up when we want to come back home you know just like a kid we'll always take them in We'll always worry, you know, worry about them. We'll always, you know, love them to death, no matter how old they are. And really, I think, at least I expect, for most of us, we love them no matter what they do to us, you know, whether they hurt us or whatever. Human race, even believers, do that to God all day long, and he still says, yeah, come in. Come on in. I'll take you in. We'll fix you up. It's, uh, it's amazing. That's why they call it Amazing Grace. Those are the things I'm thankful for. I'm also thankful for contentment uh, and, you know, the goals and the prospects surrounding that. Um, a new life, you know, a, 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 a new start. Um, and a new thing in the second half of life, you know, now that the kids are grown and they're starting to do their own thing and and uh, You know, I, I never wanted to be the kind of You know middle-aged person who just sat around on a chair and did nothing Wondered when the kids were ever gonna show up, you know <laughs> visit or whatever this is the last bolt, folks. This is I'd love to hear in the comments what you all out are thankful for. <laughs> we all have something to be thankful for. I'm sure. All right, four bolts. Ask a modern mechanic, even a modern tractor mechanic, 
if he could get a, trans, a tractor transmission or a backhoe transmission out with just four bolts all together. I mean, all told. We put a little jack here under the transmission because, of course, that gasket has it sort of locked up against the uh, bell housing frame. Uh, apply a little pressure. <clears throat> Break that gasket loose. This round housing right here is a drum that operates the emergency brake for this backhoe. This one attaches to the rear of the transmission instead of hooking up manually to the uh, yeah the drum brakes on the on the wheel. This transmission is made by Borg Warner, a company called Borg Warner. They made a lot of transmissions for Jeeps and trucks. Light, light and heavy duty trucks, Dodge, Ford, uh, International pickups, I don't know if you all remember those. And also for automobiles, uh, Studebakers, um, oh I just don't remember, whole bunches of them. This particular transmission was also used in Ford F2s and F3s. Those are the predecessors to Ford F250 and F350 pickups. It's a very simple uh, transmission. I think Borg Warner made this transmission from 1948 and stopped production sometime in the early 60s, about the time that this uh, backhoe was made. I understand this transmission is only about 75 pounds. So I should be able to bench press this thing <laughs> once I get it off, bench press it and drag it out. But if you don't hear from me again, you know, you'll probably guess what happened. Old e chip got pinned under a transmission, was never heard from again. Oh. Oh, it's leaking. Where? Or no. Oh, that's a leaf. Okay. Tighten it up again. It's tight. Okay. There we go. Okay. Look all the gunk. I want to get all of it out. Uh. See all that stuff in there? I want to get it with a something. Uh. You know what I'm the about? pokey out that thing. Pokey out thing. You ready? Uh-huh. It, it turned and then it stopped turning. Okay. That's what I needed to know. Looking good, sexy. Here we go. And now we can get to the top of the engine. Check it out. It's wide open. Wide open spaces. You get what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, twenty, you know, twenty-two bullet, uh, twenty-two bolts or something like that on this head. And that's the difference between an old engine and a modern engine used to have a lot of bolts um, on top of a cylinder head like that to make sure that it was held down tight. You had even pressure and fewer uh, instances where you have blown head gaskets. But modern, and of course this one has a blown head gasket, but I mean it's, you know, 55 years old or something. Uh, modern vehicles don't have as many bolts and they have aluminum heads instead of cast iron like this one. So <coughs> some models, because of poor design and fewer bolts, blow head gaskets more... Uh, more readily than uh, than others but we'll start and we'll just start backing them off gradually and we'll work from the middle and work our way out to the outside we're just going to loosen a little bit if we do it all at once there's a chance i mean i know i realize it's a cast iron head but there's a chance you could warp the head slightly and do a little damage so i'm just going to take it easy Are you scared to do this? Not at all. <laughs> I would be kind of scared no. if I were by myself. No. Why, there, you think it's going to pop off or no, something? No, there are so many, oh. but you just put them back where they belong. I get it. Well, but... you never really take them out. Lift the head with them in place. Oh. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, you can do that. If they'll let you. If it'll let you. Sure. I think it's going to be hard to get off. We shall see. Some rust. Okay. Oh, 
There's a thing that's up. There are two. Look at all of them that are open. It's a foul. Okay. Dry it off so we can look. What's that? That is a broken piston. A broken piston? Yep. This one here? This one. Oh, because it's up and all the rest are Did down? Did you see me push it down? Dude. I shouldn't be able to do that. That? Yeah. I c you didn't see me push it down? Uh -uh. It was sticking up. You didn't see oh. me push it down? Uh-uh. Yeah, I shouldn't be able to do that. What does a broken piston do? It doesn't work. <laughs> Is that part of the problem? Oh, yes. A big part? Yeah. Is it ruined? Part. Is it ruined? That piston is. The areas where, where it's brighter and you have more of the original metal showing are areas where it was seated down, you know, the, the gasket was seated properly and it was sealing the way it was supposed to. <clears throat> so this looks mostly okay. This looks okay. This looks okay, but when you get down here to look, number one and number two piston, uh huh, uh, looking pretty bad. Um, you know, quite a bit of, quite a bit of blow by between these two, and then we have a broken piston. Number one is broken, and that was why. Maybe is that the reason why it got zero compression? Yes, because it's. I was able to. It was loose up there. I was able to push it right down question I have is why do we have a broken piston? Tear it apart. Find out. Is this a bad, bad problem? No, it's serious. It's a serious problem. That one had rust in it. Just sitting there. But it looks like running the engine for a while has helped it a little bit. Still, there is some kind of pitting or something there. Hey folks, E-Chip and Robber, and this is our third video and final video on assessing uh, this backhoe, this dynaho, and see what we're going to do with it. Uh, I have pulled the transmission out. Um, the transmission actually, after um, a good little bit of uh, the special Marvel Mystery Tour <laughs> mix. Magic Mystery Oil. Yeah, whatever it is. <laughs> at the piston in cylinder one is broken now it hasn't caused any damage per se a little <laughs> bit of scraping or whatever on the cylinder but i either and i haven't torn off the bottom of the engine to look underneath and see what's going on there but either the rod the piston rod is broken or the uh, piston itself has broken there at the wrist where it connects to the rod uh, because i could stick my hand on it and just push it down with my finger no resistance at all so not a good sign of major engine uh, issues but as I've said this engine's really easy to fix it will have to come out if we decide to do it so what is our verdict we've talked about it we put the pencil to it again and we have decided at least tentatively that we're going to go ahead and try to work on this because this engine is very easy to work on. It's easy to rebuild. The transmission's easy to rebuild. The whole thing is pretty easy to rebuild. Yeah, I, it, it means a lot of labor, but it's time that we have and labor that we can put into it. So in the end, uh, we don't think that we will wind up with a machine that costs more than we can sell it for. So that's a good thing. And... Um, so we should get our money back out of it uh, if and when we ever go to sell it. And so this is our next project, Robert. How do you feel about that? Um, it's, I guess I'm okay with it. Um, it's a little intimidating because I've never worked on a car or tractor. I have no experience really, but so it's gonna be new skills, new adventure. So I guess I'm pretty excited. And I get to be a grease monkey, like I said before. I already have a little bit of dirty hands. You don't seem as quite as excited as you were. <laughs> uh, no, I am really, really excited still, but now we're really doing it. So I'm gonna be like, oh, we're really doing it. 
<clears throat> so we're gonna pull some major components off of this engine this and get this engine ready to pull while that's going on we have a lot of little components that we can work on and get spruced up and cleaned up and ready so well i can at least take bolts off and unscrew things so yeah. that's a good deal so we're looking at retooling the shop um back at our first location to get it ready for engine work this winter and spring and you know make room for that kind of work and push all the woodworking stuff aside get it ready so away we go wish us well and uh yeah here we go yeah! <laughs> i'm excited good <laughs>